I'm Joe Uberetz. I'm a Director of Technology and Learning at Macaulay Honors College, and I'm here with Professor Spiro Alexandrados, our new science advisor for Macaulay Honors College. Welcome, and, and we're pleased to have you in this new position. Thank you. I'd like to talk to you about both parts of that title. Uh, first, the science. How long have you been doing science? Actually, I've been doing science um, ever since I was 10 years old. Chemistry in particular, ever since I was 10. The um, elementary school that I attended in Washington Heights, it didn't have a science program, and the principal knew a chemist at Nabisco Foods. He, the first experiment that he did was the experiment that was classic even then, and even more so now, acid-base titration. Hmm. Two clear liquids combined together, and all of a sudden, it turned red. <laughs> and I was like, wow, what just happened there? It took me like 20 years to figure out what in the world happened there, but it was amazing then to see something so unexpected. And so from there, I went uh, to Brooklyn Tech, a far better school, I might add, than any other school in perhaps lower Manhattan or the Bronx. <laughs> they had a very intensive chemistry course there for four years. Loved it. Eventually found my way out to Berkeley, uh, got the doctorate there, all in chemistry. So from that first almost magical moment, yes. uh, something held your interest for such yes. a long time. Yes, yes, yes. It's probably safe to say that all of our students have, have taken science courses, but generally speaking, could you define science? Science is elegance. Science is beauty. But science, the word itself, uh, from the Greek, meaning knowledge, and I realize some people might say it's from the Latin, meaning knowledge, <laughs> but never mind them. It's all from the Greeks anyway. <laughs> but again, that also is another story. It is indeed knowledge. Science is broken up into the um, natural sciences, it is the social sciences, and it is the mathematical sciences. And natural sciences, where I spend all my time in, just an understanding of nature whether nature is in the physical sciences, chemistry, physics, astronomy, geology, or the biological sciences. Uh, then we have the social sciences in which people try to understand the interactions of people mm. within societies. And then we have the mathematical sciences which really underpin the other two sciences as well. So would you recommend science as a career? Science is a magnificent career. <laughs> there really are no words to explain it. You get up every day and you wonder why. And you're always asking a question of why. Why this? Why that? Um, why, why did the solution turn red? Why is the grass green? Why is the grass green? Grass is everywhere and it's green. Mm. And the why, and to understand the why, the molecular structure that causes it to be green, is magnificent to think that that's what you spend your life trying to figure out then. The natural philosophers in the old days, 1600s, would say that grass is green because it has greenness. Hmm. A lamp is a lamp because it has lampness. And we have gone to the point now where we understand greenness. And that is what you do in a career of science. You know, I, I think most people probably see science as something very complicated and very advanced. But it, it sounds like you're saying it starts with real fundamental questions. It starts with fundamental questions and the biggest misconception people have is that science is hard. Mm. Science, science takes study. I won't deny that. But science, because it is so logical, one principle is built upon another. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, 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 is, it is why I call it elegant, because everything is built on everything else. The problem with science, and why people think it's hard, mm. is because it, it wasn't taught in a way that it should be taught in the earliest years. And that can turn people off. That sounds like it, it leads us nicely to your advisor part of your role. The advisor part. The advisor, the advisor part has many different facets to it. Um, all colleges have a support structure for students. I'm simply one more in a layer of support that students should take advantage of. But that's, that's really how I see my role as complementing what happens at the colleges, to help students understand how to go from here to there, from the status of student to the status of scientist. Like what, and I remember many things, many questions that I myself had. I remember in college thinking, okay, now I have to go get a master's degree in chemistry, and then from there I'll progress to a PhD. And I remember a professor telling me, no, that's not true. Hmm. You don't need a master's degree in chemistry. 
you just go straight for a PhD if that's what you want. People want masters as well as a PhD, no problem. The point is you don't need it. And it's little details like that that I think I'm capable of conveying to students. Are there other aspects to the advisor role? Is there uh, other things you can offer? Uh, along with advice, you know, it's the idea of research. Many students have questions about, well, how do I do research? How do I get into research? And I'm able to explain what the role of research is. That is, what do you do when you're in the laboratory? Mm. Um, how do you work with a professor? How do you work in a particular setting in the research? So that's another aspect of what I, what I can do, what I can discuss. And another thing is that sometimes there are, there are, there are problems. Problems always arise. If there's an issue, I can help um, be an intermediary between the student and wherever the um, problem may lie. Are there research opportunities in CUNY or outside of CUNY for, for our students? We, we, have, we have great opportunities um, within CUNY and being multiply blessed in being in New York City, in being in Manhattan, we have many opportunities outside of CUNY as well at the hospitals, for example. But within CUNY, every college has an active research program. And faculty are always more than happy to work with students in a research capacity. So if, if a student is a, a science major or even just considering uh, studying science, how should they get in contact with you? How can they ask you to, to be a science advisor for them? Uh, it's, it's just, you know, as easy as can be. Um, my email address, I, I, the email address is available. I will, I will show it later. And um, just send me an email and we'll set up a time. Uh, the way I've set it up, Mondays and Thursdays, I'm more than happy to meet with students uh, any time of the day. I would be happy to meet with them here. I'd be happy to meet with them at Hunter. We can always set up a time though, but it's very easy. Wonderful. Well, thanks very much. It's been great talking to you, and I'm sure students are going to be happy to take advantage of, of this new program. Thank you very much, Joe. My pleasure. Thank you.